I just went out and bought seven different MIG welders to find out whether a MIG welder that costs under $200 can perform just as well or even better than one that costs $2,000. Well, let's find out. In the first test, we'll see which welding machine makes the deepest weld penetration. Then we'll see which one makes the strongest weld using flux core wire. We'll see which two welding machines are able to weld sheet metal. Finally, we'll see which welding machines can weld for five minutes and which ones won't. At a price of $189 is this flame weld brand. It's a MIG welding machine that offers up to 160 amps. We're going to test that. It's a dual voltage 120, 240 volt. It uses a one knob intelligent control system. The machine auto controls the voltage and current to achieve a smooth arc. The flame weld does claim to be thermally protected. The flame weld is made in China. All the welders except for the Chicago Electric are also capable of arc welding. All the welders that are being tested are designed for running both solid wire with argon CO2 shielding gas and also flux core. The inside panel on the flame weld has instructions for setting up the welder and how to install the wire. The welder comes with gas hose but not the regulator. The flame weld uses a threaded fitting while several of the other welders use a quarter inch barb fitting. To install the roll of wire, I'll first remove the spool knob. I'll place a two pound spool of wire on the holder and reinstall the spool knob. With two pounds of wire inside the welder, 17.5 pounds. The feed tester slides down and out of the way, allowing the idle arm to lift. With this welder, it is sort of difficult to feed the wire into the gun cable end. The feed tester is back in place and this welder has a button specifically designed for feeding wire into the cable. The contact tip has already been removed. I'll go ahead and install the contact tip and nozzle. Using 0.035 flux core wire, let's go ahead and measure the lowest and highest possible current. I'm going to lower the current from 60 to 50 amps. And the wire speed is off a little, but the current varied from 37 to 97 amps on the 50 amp setting. The flame weld started at 158 amps and it dropped to 151 after 3 seconds. At a price of $230 is this Chicago Electric MIG welder which is sold at Harbor Freight. Designed for MIG or flex core arc welding. Thermal overload protection with indicator light. There are basically four power settings with the high low for levels 1 and 2. The wire speed is controlled by a dial. For flex core welding it's supposed to be electrode negative. The red wire is the electrode and it is electrode negative. For gas welding it's electrode positive. The welding current is 30 to 170 amps DC. Insert the wire through both wire liners and clamp it into feedback mechanism. Remove nozzle and tip, plug in welder, and turn it on. Squeeze the trigger until the wire comes out. Incrementally tighten the wire feed tension knob clockwise until wire will bend from feed tension at 2 to 3 inches. The Chicago Electric uses a quarter inch barb fitting. And the ground clamp for the Chicago Electric is on the left and the flame weld is on the right. I'm surprised that the quality of the flame weld is just so much better. With 10 pounds of wire on board, the Chicago Electric weighs 58.5 pounds. On the lowest setting, the Chicago Electric started off at 82 amps and dropped to around 67. On the highest setting, the welder started off at 150 one amps and warmed up to 168 after three seconds. At a price of $252 is this Izuno brand. Up to 200 amps of current. Equipped with overload and overheating protection. Designed to handle two pound and 10 pound rolls. The nice thing about the Izuno is it's a four in one welder. It's designed for flex core, MIG, lift TIG, and arc welding. The Izuno is made in China. Just like the Chicago Electric, the Izuno uses a quarter inch barb fitting for gas hookup. The Izuno claims to hold a 10 pound spool of wire and the 10 pound spool fits just fine. Just like the Chicago Electric, there's plenty of space for easy access to getting a new spool of wire fed into the gun cable. And the Izuna with 10 pounds of welding wire on board weighs very close to 40 pounds. On the lowest setting, starting off at 22 amps and warming up into the 40s. On the highest setting, starting off at 206 amps and cooling down to 196 at 3 seconds. At a price of $260 is this War King brand. It's a 110 220 volt dual voltage welder. Solid wire MIG, flex core, as well as stick. Up to 180 amps of current. It also includes overload protection. The working does not come with all the hardware that's required for TIG. The welder comes with 1 kilogram or 2.2 pounds of wire. The working is made in China. And it's a very tight fit with the spool that came with the welder. Trying to start a roll of wire is a bit of a challenge. A full 10 pound spool of wire is definitely going to be a challenge due to the positioning of the wire feed mechanism. With 2 pounds of wire on board, the working is very light at only 23.4 pounds. And the working has a barred fitting for the gas connection. On the lowest heat setting, there's quite a bit of fluctuation from 41 to 106 amps. And the working started off at 229 amps and dropped to 211 after 3 seconds. At a price of $360 is this Yes Welder MIG 205DS. It claims to offer a full 30 to 205 amps. Automatic protection function for overcurrent, overvoltage, and overheating. 110 220 dual voltage capable. Includes gas, gasless MIG, TIG, and arc welding. The Yes Welder is made in China. The Yes Welder is well designed to handle a 2 or 10 pound spool of wire. And the wire feed mechanism is positioned to allow the wire to feed into the gun cable without bending the wire. With a 10 pound roll of wire on board, the Yes Welder weighs 40.22 pounds. And the Yes Welder was pretty consistent from 59 to 68 amps on the lowest setting. The Yes Welder started off really hot and cooled to 211 amps after 3 seconds on the highest setting. At a price of $1,150 is this Vulcan Omni Pro 220 which is sold at Harbor Freight. It claims to be a top of the line multi-process welder. It can handle MIG, stick, TIG, and flex core welding. For TIG and stick welding, up to 175 amps. Includes 132 preloaded welding programs for easy setup. 120 or 240 volt input. Inverter technology for highest quality output and maximum efficiency. The Vulcan is made in China.
Of all the welders so far, the Vulcan is by far the easiest for installing a roll of wire. However, it is a pretty large welder. The geometry for the wire feed is excellent and allows for a pretty straight wire run into the wire feed mechanism. There's a wire feed button to make the process even easier. And a gas supply hose has a threaded fitting. And with 10 pounds of wire, the Vulcan weighs 66.5 pounds. On the lowest setting, 72 to 105 amps. On the highest setting, 257 amps starting off and dropping 206 amps after 3 seconds. At an eye-watering price of $2,300, is this Lincoln 210? As I've said many times before, this is not a sponsored channel and I purchased all the welders. The Lincoln 210 is designed for MIG, stick, TIG, and flux core welding. Inside the side panel of the welder is a very helpful reference chart. You can weld up the 3 inch material using MIG. It's dual voltage offering 110 or 220 volts. The Lincoln is assembled in Mexico. Without a spool of wire on board, the Lincoln weighs just under 42 pounds. Just like the Vulcan 220, the Lincoln is a larger welder with plenty of space for installing the wire. Definitely an easy process to install the wire into the wire feed mechanism. And it's 21 to 49 amps of current on the lowest setting with the Lincoln. 281 to 285 amps of current on the highest setting. Later in the video, we'll test the welders out on some very thin 20 gauge sheet metal. On the highest setting, the Lincoln makes the most current at 281 amps after 3 seconds of welding. The working in the Yes welder tied for second at 211 and Vulcan 203 amps. And tool weight can sometimes be a factor in the flame weld is the lightest at 15.5 pounds without the welding wire installed. Working weighs 21.4 pounds, Azuno and Yes Welder weigh just over 30 pounds. A big thank you to Virgil for helping me with the MIG welding review. I've set up the test design for this review to challenge the welding machines and they'll be set up running at a much higher current than normal to compare penetration. In the next test, Virgil will be using 0.035 solid wire with argon CO2 shielding gas to butt weld quarter inch steel plate using the flame weld. All the welding machines have been set up to get the best possible penetration. However, the flame weld just doesn't produce enough current to achieve good penetration, but it does make a pretty nice looking weld. And the Chicago Electric is creating more wire speed than the flame weld, but the wire speed is fluctuating quite a bit. And the Zuno does skip a little bit as the wire is feeding through it, but considering the price of the welder, it does offer a pretty decent weld. And the working is delivering the most current yet, and it is delivering a smooth and consistent weld. Oh yeah, I like that. That runs smooth. As soon as you fire up, instantly penetrates. And the Yes welder is definitely producing more amps of current than all the previous brands. That was actually pretty good. You can see it actually in the material that you're burning a lot deeper than some of the other ones. Pretty good welder. This one here did a good job. Okay. I like it. And the Vulcan and Yes welder make pretty close to the same amount of current. I'm pretty impressed with it. It digs in pretty deep. You can actually tell that it is a little hot for the quarter inch, but uh, it digs in deep. I'm pretty impressed with it. Just like the Vulcan, the Lincoln makes quite a bit of current. You could have adjusted the wire speed a little bit more. As in for penetration, it's about the same as the Vulcan. I think it ran pretty smooth. I really like it. It runs pretty good. I'll go ahead and grind off the weld that's just above the steel plate so we can measure penetration. I folded each of the test pieces and measured the area with the deepest penetration for each of the brands. And the Vulcan delivered the deepest weld at 0.188 inches, but the Lincoln was in a close second at 0.185. The Yes Welder also performed very well at 0.183 inches. In the next test, let's see how the welders perform using 0.035 flux core welded together quarter inch plate with a 45 degree bevel and a 1 16 cents landing. We'll see how each of the welding machines perform, making just two passes. So the wire speed just isn't as consistent as some of the other machines. It does penetrate pretty good for being as hot as it is. But fusion wise, it is digging in on both sides. Spots where you can see a shadow and it's normally where it's not tied into the base metal. That is a pretty decent looking cap pass. I put together a tester to test the strength of the welds. The scale will measure the amount of force it takes to break the test piece. And Virgil is right about the cap weld. And the weld finally broke at 5,972 pounds. And the Chicago Electric's wire speed is a little bit more consistent than the flame welds. I don't like the way this one actually did a, a cap pass. And you can actually watch that puddle moving around. And it wants to form it in front of your puddle before it actually fuses together. It did burn through, but it, of course we did have a beveled edge. For quarter inch, it did okay. I wouldn't use it a lot on, on quarter inch material. If I was going to use it just for the flux side, I would go with a thicker material. And the Chicago Electric welding machine performed well at 4,759 pounds, but the flame weld is holding on to the lead at almost 6,000 pounds. And the Zuno machine definitely seems like an upgrade compared to the flame weld in the Chicago Electric. Doesn't have a whole lot of splatter to it. Ran fairly smooth except for the surgeon on the wire speed. But all in all, I like the way it welded. The Zuno did pretty decent for the first part of it. Ended up keyholing this one and the Chicago Electric just to get a decent root in there. And the Azuno offers more welding current than the flame weld in the Chicago Electric, and it made the strongest weld at 6,133 pounds. And the working is delivering the most current yet. It was surging a little bit. All right, the working was not a very good welder for this. It does have a lot of penetration to it, but it's inconsistent. I, I would throw this one in the trash, to be honest with you, just because of the fact that it's just so inconsistent on welding. And it wants to surge a lot 
we had a lot of issues with some of the surging. And the War King just isn't as strong as the previous three brands. And the weld broke at 3,743 pounds. And the Yes Welder's producing a nice and smooth wire speed without much surging compared to some of the other brands. Nice penetration, smooth. This is another one I would love to have. Nice little weld. Yes Welder. This one here I really enjoyed running. I like to weld hot and fast. Did a great job on burning through. We had a 330 second gap on all of these. As in for fill on both ends. Did a good job tying into your edges. I would hit it with a grinder a little bit and put another cap pass right across the top of that. With the cap weld pass, the Yes Welder would have been even stronger, but 5,143 pounds is a very good performance. Just like the Yes Welder, the Vulcan produces a very consistent wire speed without much surging compared to some of the other welding machines. As in for weld, welded pretty nice, really nice. Plenty of penetration, welded underneath. This isn't your just your normal hobbyist welder. I like it, very nice. Onto the Vulcan, quite a bit of keyholing going on with this one. It did a great job on filling it. We run a little hot for a consistent weld. It did a pretty decent job. As in for fill, I mean this one here could use two bead cap. And a cap pass would have helped, but the Vulcan still has plenty of strength at almost 6,000 pounds. Just like the Yes Welder and Vulcan, the Lincoln's wire speed is very consistent. Very smooth. The crispness of the sound of the weld does a nice even root. It was easy, nice flow. And the Lincoln could have went just a little bit slower on the root. That root is fairly consistent. As in a consistent bead, I mean it's, it's beautifully tied in, both edges, not one issue with this one. And the Lincoln did indeed put together a very impressive performance moving into first place with the strongest weld at 6,349 pounds. Very impressive. Placing a cap weld in all the test pieces would have helped, but the welding machines performed very well except for the War King. And the Chicago Electric was also a little below average at 4,759 pounds. We tested the welders on thick material, so let's see how the welders perform on 20 gauge metal, which is about the same thickness of a fender on a compact car. The welding machines will be set up with 0.03 inch flex core wire and the machines will be plugged into a 120 volt outlet. Before beginning the test on sheet metal, Virgil is going to set up each machine to optimize it for welding the thinnest material possible. This is definitely not the best approach for welding thin gauge material, but it will help us identify which welders are best suited for thin gauge metal. And the flame welder is on the lowest setting, but it's still running way too hot to run a continuous weld. Running a continuous weld, the flame welder is going to burn right through the metal. Virgil definitely does not recommend using this approach for welding sheet metal. However, I've asked him to weld this way just to show the lower limit of each machine. Way too hot. It won't fuse an actual puddle, and when you do get a puddle, it's too late. It's some blow holes. You go to run too fast, you're not going to get a consistent weld. So the Chicago Electric is definitely not well designed for welding thin materials. On the lowest setting, the Zuno's current range from 22 to 58 amps, which gives it a huge advantage over most of the other machines on thin gauge material. That did very well. For being what it is, good quality weld. Holding one spot too long, it will burn through. Yeah. But if you keep moving, it does pretty decent weld. On the lowest setting, the War King runs way too hot to lay down a good weld without burning through. You can stay at a consistent pace without it burning through. Trying to fluctuate it to where it will actually lay down and smooth out and flow better for welding on the thinner stuff, I wouldn't use it. I don't like the way this one welds on thinner stuff because when you're trying to do spot weld, because then it will flare out and lay down flatter and nicer and smoother. When I'd hit it and then let off, it would actually fuse that wire all the way back up. That's the part that I do not like. I like to have the wire consistently out there instead of it being all the way up. It just runs a lot hotter. I wouldn't use this on thin gauge material. I would only use it on thicker. Again, it does run smooth. This will not weld 22 gauge. I mean, you can weld it, but you're going to be burning a lot of holes because you just can't get it turned down low enough. This would be a great welder for thick material. I'm happy with that. Bead profile is pretty nice. Didn't burn through a whole lot. Heat signature is good. Straight line, you got to kind of fluctuate, manipulate that put a little bit. All in all, good welder. In the next test, let's run the welders for five minutes as close as possible to 160 amps. We'll check for current drop during the entire five minutes. And the flame weld is set for 165 amps, but the welder is only producing 100 amps after two minutes. And the flame weld stayed around 85 amps throughout the rest of the five minutes. After about a minute, the Chicago Electric was at 127 amps and dropped around 100 amps after two minutes. And the Chicago Electric overheated and shut down at three minutes and 43 seconds. And the Izuno is doing by far the best yet at close to 160 amps after a minute. And the Izuno stayed very close to 123 amps during the rest of the five minute test. And the War King started off strong and remained around 160 amps for the first two minutes. After three minutes, it was down a little to 155 and 144 amps after four minutes. And the War King just couldn't quite finish the test at four minutes and 52 seconds. Just like the War King, the Yes Welder started off strong at 156 amps. It dropped around 147 amps at three minutes and finished at five minutes at 133 amps. And the Vulcan held on to 160 amps for the first three minutes and then dropped to 144 amps for the final two minutes. 
The Lincoln started off at 160 amps and then dropped a little to around 145 by five minutes. And this chart is pretty busy, but it shows just how closely matched the Yes Welder Vulcan and Lincoln are when it comes to delivering current for five minutes. The War King performed well, but it did shut down just before reaching five minutes. So which welder is the best? And the Lincoln finished first in every category except for weld penetration. However, the Vulcan and Yes Welder are both very competitive with each other, with the Vulcan barely finishing ahead of the Yes Welder. If you're really concerned about the budget, the Yes Welder is a great buy at about 360 bucks. If it's all about value, the Zuno is very hard to beat at around $250, and there's a good chance you could find a coupon to bring the price down even more. If you're paying over $1,000 for a welder like the Lincoln or the Vulcan, you're going to expect great performance. But what's really impressive is the technology that's wrapped up in the Yes Welder and the Zuno. Both are terrific welders, and those would be my choice if it's about value. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.